we will now find all solutions in the natural numbers to the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared where a is odd b is even Remember, we proved recently that with A and B, one is even and the other is odd. So we're going to decide right now that A is the one that is odd, B is the one that is even. It really doesn't matter which one is which. We just have to decide. You can always turn the triangle around, change the orientation. So A is odd, B is even. And important thing to remember is this is a primitive Pythagorean triple, which means that A, B, and C have no common factors. So the ideas that we will use Factorization and divisibility. So you want to notice something. Notice that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared can be written as a squared equals c squared minus b squared. Now, why would we do that? Well, the right-hand side now is a difference of squares. So remember how that factors. So c squared minus b squared can be written as c minus b times c plus b. As you'll see, this is actually very helpful. So let's look at some examples right now. Hopefully these examples will give us an idea where we need to go with this. Because remember what we're trying to do, we're trying to come up with a formula that will give us all primitive Pythagorean triples. So an example of a, of a Pythagorean triple, a primitive Pythagorean triple is three, four, five. So if we rearrange that equation, we have three squared is equal to five squared minus four squared. And of course, five squared minus four squared can be written as five minus four times five plus four, which is one times nine. So this is a true statement. 3 squared is the same thing as 1 times 9. Well, another example of a Pythagorean triple is 8, 15, 17. We had that on a, on a previous slide. So 15 squared can be written as 17 squared minus 8 squared. Again, using our difference of squares formula, 17 squared minus 8 squared is the same thing as 17 minus 8 times 17 plus 8. Well, 17 minus 8 is 9. And 17 plus 8 is 25. And 9 times 25 is 225, which is 15 squared. Let's, let's look at one more. 
35 squared is 37 squared minus 12 squared. Now we can break this down again using the difference of squares. 37 minus 12 is 25. And 37 plus 12 is 49. So what you want to notice is that all of these numbers that I'm circling right now, they are all perfect squares. So we're going to say this. It appears that C minus B and C plus B are themselves. always squares. So that's going to help us, you know, get a direction where we're going to be going with, with this problem. Remember what we're trying to do, we're trying to come up with a formula that's going to give us all primitive Pythagorean triples. Now, if you go back and look at those examples that we just did, you'll see that it also appears that C minus B and C plus B have no common factors. So why don't we prove this statement? Okay, and again, what we're going to do is we're going to use contradiction, okay? Proof by contradiction. So Let's say they do have a common factor and call that D. <laughs> Let D be a common factor of C minus B and C plus B. Well, D is a common factor of both C minus B and C plus B. D is going to be a com is going to be a factor of their sum and difference. Then D is also a common factor. of their sum, C plus B plus C minus B is 2C, and C plus B minus C minus B is 2B. So, this implies that D divides both 2B and 2C. But what have we as assumed? Well, we have assumed that B and C 
have no common factor. So D must equal one or two because we just said that D divides 2B and 2C. So since B and C are you know, off limits because they have no common factor, uh, the only possibility is that D is one or two because the factors of two are one and two. But you have to remember that D is a factor of the product C minus B times C plus B. Because D is a common factor of C minus B and C plus B, D is certainly a factor of their product. Now, what is C minus B times C plus B? That is A squared, because C minus B times C plus B is C squared minus B squared, which of course is A squared, which we said at the beginning is odd. So since D is a factor of a odd number, we have to choose between 1 and 2, right? It has to be 1. So D must equal 1. Therefore, C minus B and C plus B have no common factor. All right, so we now know that one, C minus B, the quantity C minus B, and the quantity C plus B are relatively prime. Relatively prime means they have no common factor. Two. C minus B times C plus B is equal to A squared. So C minus B and C plus B are relatively prime. And their product is equal to A squared. Now this is gonna to lead to something that we noticed in our list of examples from a few slides ago. So the only this to happen The only possible way for this to happen is if C minus B and C plus B are themselves squares. So, we've decided that both C minus B and C plus B are perfect squares, so we have 
C minus B is equal to M squared, let's say, and C minus B equals N squared. If we rearrange these equations, we're actually solve for C and B. We have C equals M squared plus N squared over 2, and B is equal to N squared minus M squared over 2. Now remember that a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared, or a squared is equal to c minus b times c plus b. This would be a c plus b. So a would have to be m times n. So we actually have our formulas. We're going to clean them up a little bit. So you will get every primitive Pythagorean triple A, B, C with A odd and B even by using the formulas A is equal to S times T. B is equal to S squared minus T squared over 2. C is equal to S squared plus T squared over 2. With S greater than T, which is greater than or equal to 1. And S and t both are odd and relatively prime. So plug in some numbers for s and t and experiment. You'll see you can generate any Pythagorean triple. Use Microsoft Excel to help out.